All right, so the first title was about, uh, of course, defining the rotational motion. So uh, definition of rotational motion is so clear. If an object spins or rotates, so we say that it undergoes rotational motion. So we are going to check if it's spinning, if something is rotating. So that object, that rotating object, or that uh, spinning object uh, is said to be in rotational motion. And the keywords for rotational motion is spin and rotate or roll. Spins, rotates, or rolls. If these three words are used in a sentence, so then which means this sentence is talking about rotational motion. So, first well, for example, spinning first well is in rotational motion, it's a rigid object, or a rolling ball, or a spinning spinner, or spinning ice skater, rotational motion, or uh, uh, spinning earth around its own axis, rotating earth about its own axis, it's also rotational motion. Uh, but when we study this rotational, this is rotating object, we see that there are, uh, the, every point on this object is rotating about a single point, a single line. Every single point on a rotation object moves around a specific line. So this line is known as axis of rotation. So if this is a, a model for a Ferris well, so we see that as it's rotating, it's rotating about a specific line. That specific line is the axis of rotation of uh, this ob object. And we, uh, if we are talking about an axis of rotation, we see that axis of rotation is not uh, moving, but every point about this object is moving around that point or that line. And that's why axis of rotation is defined by two ways. One of them is in general, general definition, the line about which rotation occurs is called axis of rotation. This is this belongs to, to every types of uh, rotational motion. But second one is specific to the Ferris well. So it's a line perpendicular to the side of Ferris well. Look at here, this is the line. And this line is passing through the side, this side of the Ferris well. It's a line perpendicular to the side of Ferris well and passing through the wheel's center. You see the wheel's center, it's passing through. So this definition so is made according to the Ferris well. And second, the first definition is made according to the every type of rotating object, general and specific to the Ferris wheel. And uh, I will continue with the next slide. As an object is uh, rotating, every point on this object, whatever the shape object is, it does not matter, will move or travel in a circle. So maybe you can see that our teacher, the shape of this uh, object is like a cylinder. It's a kind of circle. Even it's a, a box, for example, assume that a box is rotating about an axis of rotation every single point on this box again will follow the circle a circular path so this is uh, one of the important thing in rotational motion if an object is rotating about any point any axis of rotation so every point on this object will follow a circle that's why we say that these points, A and B, for example, here I choose two points, A and B, both are in circular motion because they follow the circles. Then we can say that if a point or an object is following a circle, just a circular path, so this motion is known as circular motion. So revolve or orbit, two words are referring the circular motion of an object. Uh, for example, if we make uh, these two row motion in one sentence, we can say like this, the Ferris wheel 
spins or rotates, it's in rotational motion, but the cabins or light bulbs, for example, they follow circles, that's why they are in circular motion. And regardless of the shape of the object, as I said, uh, we don't care about the shape, circular or elliptical or box, whatever, regardless of the shape of the object, any single point on, on an object travels in a circle around the axis of rotation. That's why we should know about the circle first. So some properties of the circle we are going to learn. Until now, any questions about what I explained? No? Okay, so now I will give some basic information about the circles. Uh, circle, what is a circle? So in a circle, all points are at a certain distance from a fixed point. This is the fixed point. So which is known as the center of the circle. And every point on, at the same distance from the center, which is the radius, this distance called the radius. And all of these points form the circumference of this circle. So, and distance from the center to a point, which is the called radius. The length of the line passing through the center and touching two points is the called diameter. And we know that radius is half of diameter. And length of the, and the distance around the circle, that distance around the circle is called circumference. And we know that diameter is twice the radius and radius is half of diameter. And this distance is called circumference and calculated by 2 pi r. And one more thing we should know uh, about um, in circular motion. If a question is talking you uh, a sentence like or, or a definition like this, 2.5 kilometers circular path. This 2.5 is defining the length of the circle, not radius. There's a question in your book and it's that question is twice asked in the exam. An object is following a uh, like 2.16 kilometer circular path. When it says that, it is talking about the circumference, which is C, not radius, not diameter. So uh, that's why you should first understand this. Yes, if the definition is like this, so if an object follows a circular path of 2.5 kilogram or a 2.5 sorry kilometer 2.5 kilometer circular path followed by an object if it is like this if it's defining the circumference of that object or that path and uh, next one is uh, of course we will now start defining the circular motion, but circular motion is more accurately described in terms of angles. Why? Why is it like this? And I will briefly show that. Uh, travel distance alone cannot properly describe circular motion of an object because, for example, let's say there are two circular paths, A and B, big one and smaller one. If somebody says to you that both bicycles, both bicycles A and B, move equal distances on the circle. So you cannot predict where is the final position of these bicycles if you don't know how big is the, or how small is the circles. Uh, however, if somebody says you two bicycles, A and B, move equal angles, so say 90 degrees. So we don't care, we don't care how big the first circle is, or how small is the second one. So this 90 degree is enough to define the final position of the bicycle. So 90 degree you are going to draw. Yes, bicycle A will be here, or 90 degree draw from here, bicycle B will be here. So that's why circular motion is defined in terms of distance and angle. So if no angle, it's not very easy to define the circular motion. That's why um, in this uh, section, we are going to use the angles uh, to define the circular motion. For example, uh, this 
bicycle is moving if an object, if a bicycle or object moves in a circular path once, one time. So we said that it makes one turn. It's called one turn. It completes one revolution. It completes one revolution. This is called one revolution. It travels a distance which is equal to length of this length of the circumference, which is two pi r, and its angle of turn is three hundred and sixty, which is two pi radian. These three are defining. These four are defining the same thing, one revolution, moving on a circle once, making one turn, completing one revolution, traveling a distance, which is two pi r, and turning on a circle with an angle of two pi radian, which is equal to 360 degrees. This time is important because sometimes two times, when it says two times, which means it's two revolutions, because there are some questions, and then student cannot get what times mean and what does it refer. Times refer time one revolution. Don't forget this. One time one revolution. Two times two revolutions. Three point five times. So one, two, three and a half revolutions. Three point five times. Or 4.5 times means four and a half revolutions. So these are equal about the one complete turn or three times three turns or four turns or five turns. All they are also referring the uh, revolutions. But if an object moves half, makes a half turn, half circle, semicircle or path. So we say that it makes a half turn, it completes half a revolution, it travels a distance half of the circumference, which is pi r, two pi r divided by two. It makes an angle of turn, which is 180, or which is two, 3.14 radian, or pi radian. What if angle is smaller than that, any angle, so this bicycle is moving at an angle of theta. Okay, if an object moves along a part of a circle, that part of the circle is known as arc in maths. This is an arc. And object will turn some angle theta, and by the time it travels a distance s, which is equal to length of the arc. Length of the arc, sometimes we will say later this is arc length arc length and this arc length it's a linear quantity because it is measured by meters angle theta is is a rotational quantity or angular quantity r is the radius of the circle it's also a linear quantity as r and theta are related by equation theta this angle is equal to arc length divided by radius of the circle but be careful because both are length and length so then theta is measured in radian it has no dimension so we will measure not degree we will measure the angle in theta that's why in calculations of uh, problems we should do you should do this um, calculations in by using the radian this must be radian don't forget never we use the degree in calculations we use radian. This equation is the basic of all other equations which relates linear and angular quantities or rotational quantities. Theta is equal to angle is equal to corresponding arc length divided by radius of the circle. Then we defined what radian is. So one radian is defined in maths as the angle whose arc length is equal to its radius. Look at here, there is, here is this angle, if this angle is one radian, which is almost equal to 57.3, arc length, this arc length, and that radius must be equal in length. Yeah, let me say a number, given number. If radius is 10 centimeter of, this arc length must be 10 centimeter, then, we say that this angle is one radian, which is 57.3 degree. 
or if you say you have a very very big circular path of radius 100 meters if this angle is one radian 57.3 that also must be 100 meters so that's why arc length and radius must be equal for angle to be one radian or 57.3 this 57.3 is to twice asking this exam question they ask what one radian is equal to one radian is equal to 57.3 degrees and radian is a pure number with no dimensions which means because uh, arc length because uh, arc length is uh, you remember radian is uh, is calculated by arc length divided by radius arc length is a linear quantity it is length Reduce a linear quantity which is length. So length, length divided to say simplify. That's why I, a, a radian has just one number. It's in fact it's like two, like five, like seven. But uh, to express what that seven is, a unit is provided to radian as radian. We say that 3.14 radian or five radian or three radian. It's just a unit, but radian has no dimension because length and length, there are dimensions of arc length and the radius, they simplify for that reason. We say that radian has no dimensions. And converting the radian to degree is important. Case. As I said, question the questions generally they will give the degree, but in calculation, we never use degree. That's why we need to convert radian to degree or sometimes from degree to radian. So it's very easy. It's on, uh, just we know that two pi radian, which is 360 degree. So pi radian, which is 180 degree. You can use these two relations, these relations between the radian, 3.14, don't forget pi always 3.14 radian, uh, which is equal to 180 degree. So then you can make a cross product in this case. You will say like this, pi radian is equal to 180 degree, any angle in radian is equal to how much in degree or how much any angle in degree is equal to how much in radian cross product like this one for example 35 degrees is how many radians we know that 3.14 radian is 180 35 degrees equal to how many radians cross product uh, which is uh, theta in radian multiplied by 180 is equal to 3.40 multiplied by 35 divide by 180 both sides and get the answer as radian this is one way just cross cross product uh, it's not you don't need to know an equation but from this uh, proportionality it's also possible to write an equation so a pi radian which is 3.14 is equal to 180 degrees so theta in radian is equal to um, theta in degree cross product again so theta in radian multiplied by 180 so it's pi multiplied by theta in degree. The rest is you are going to divide by 180 to get theta in radian, pi over 180 multiplied by angle in radian degree. Or if you want to get angle in degree, divide by pi, divide by pi. So angle is deg in degree is equal to 180 divided by pi multiplied by angle in radian. Okay, uh, be careful about this. This is degree, that is also degree. So they will simplify degrees units uh, if you give degrees as units so they will simplify and you cannot write here 3.14 because 3.14 is in radian so they must simplify each other so then the result must be in radian but look at here this is radian this is also radian so radians must be just simplify them yani theta angle in radian is in numerator pi is in denominator here is angle in degree in numerator 180 is in denominators so then they are flipped i mean if you compare this two so but don't forget pi is always written here 3.14 and uh, next way is some students are using definition of the radian like this one radian is equal to 57.3 so uh, angle in radian is equal to how much in degree cross product again for example um one degree uh, 35 degrees, degrees equal to how many radian you are going to write like this one radian is equal to 57.3 35 degrees equal to how many radian again cross product so you can also get 
the uh, radian or degree conversion by using these three uh, methods. It's up to you which one is best for you. You are going to use it. Okay, uh, I will stop here. Any questions you would like to ask me? I'm going to unmute you. Everything is clear? Everything is clear? Some, I think, so I will mute again. I will continue. All right, and then we will start defining the motion. Remember, in physics, we define the uh, motion uh, in terms of, uh, sorry, I have to go back. In terms of, uh, with respect to a point, which is known as reference point in the 11th grade, but in circular motion, you are going to define the motion of an object with respect to a, a reference uh, line. For example, here is a bicycle. Initially, the bicycle is uh, at, at zero distance from, or zero angle from the, this reference line. Then this bicycle is starting to move on circular path and arrives to a final position, which is uh, after a time of delta t. And by the time this bicycle is following a circular path, uh, pardon, uh, distance, which is the arc length, and also it turns some angle, which is delta theta. And in fact, we know what is the relation between s, theta, and r. And uh, this, the distance delta s traveled by the object along the circular path is called arc length, delta s, and the angle delta theta through which the object turns is known as angular displacement. And this angular displacement is defined uh, as uh, this, the angle through which an object is rotated, angle through which an object is rotated is known as angular displacement. So uh, delta, remember there was equation theta is equal to S over R. Now in terms of the angular displacement, it's going to be delta theta is delta S over R. And again, delta S here is the linear quantity. It will be in meter. R is also will be in meter. Delta theta angular displacement will be in, uh, radian and delta s and delta theta can be considered positive and negative if rotation is clockwise so like this this is clockwise rotation so we are going to get both arc length and angular displacement as negative if the rotation is counterclockwise we are going to write both angular displacement and uh, or arc length angular displacement in positive. So counterclockwise rotation, they both are positive. Clockwise rotation, they both are negative. And every revolution or one, one revolution or one rotation corresponds to an arc angular displacement, which is 6.28 radian or two pi radian, like what? One rotation of Minitand. This is the minitand. It will start from here and then turns once. One rotation. It takes, it is 3.6.28 radian. Or one rotation of minute. This is second and this is minitand. So this minitand from 55 to 55, it's one rotation. It is 6.28. Or hour. It's hour end. From 45 to 45, one rotation takes again 6.28. This is very easy. We don't care about how fast it is moving or how slowly it is moving or which object is moving. So all one rotations, all one rotations have an angular displacement 6.28. And even the rotation of the earth, moon or sun around their own axis also an angular displacement 6.28. 
or revolution, circular motion. These three, these two refers to rotational motion, but revolution refers to circular motion. One revolution of Earth around the sun, or one revolution of moon around the Earth, or one revolution of a car around the circular path. All these three are also one revolution, refers to an angular displacement, which is equal to 6.28. This makes in calculations very easily. If you know about how uh, it's how much it rotated or it's uh, moved on a circle, so then you can get the angular displacement easily without knowing any other extra information. And of course, if yeah, it's moving on a circular path, uh, but how fast it's moving? How it's how fast it's turning? How fast it's revolving? So this is. If something is related to how fast, so it's speed, it's definition of speed. So in the 11th grade, we learn about the translational speed, how fast an object displaces from one point to another. But now we will talk about the uh, angular speed. Uh, the object rotates an angle of delta theta, which is angular displacement, in a time interval delta t. Remember, linear speed is calculated by delta s over delta t or delta x over delta t, but angular speed also in the same manner. You are going to define displacement, but which displacement? Angular, of course. Angular displacement, delta theta is the angular displacement. This delta theta will be divided by time. How long does it take from here to there? We are just going to measure the time. Just we are going to measure this angle and we will find the and how, what is the angular speed? So angular speed is speed related to rotational motion of an object, so which is known as the rate at which a body rotates. Uh, these definitions are important, so they can give this statement to you exactly and ask what is it. When it says rate, you are going to define a quantity with a time, don't forget. The rate at which a body rotates about an axis, angular displacement. Angular displacement, this describes how quickly rotation occurs, also known as rate of rotation. An angular displacement is the ratio of, ang pardon, angular speed is the ratio of angular displacement delta theta to time interval delta t. Okay, this is the equation, and its unit is radian per second. Radian is the unit of angular displacement, delta t is the second time, and angular speed is radian per second. Such questions are frequently asked like this. One revolution of an object takes 10 seconds, for example. From here to there, it takes 10 seconds, one revolution of the bicycle. What is angular displacement of this object? So what is angle, pardon, what is average speed of this object? Angular displacement is 6.28 from here to there. A time is 10 seconds, 6.28 divided by 10 seconds, which is equal to 0 0.628. It is so simple. Sometimes they're asking half. An object cuts the half of a circular path. Half of the circular path in 10 seconds, for example. So half of the half circle has an angular displacement of 3.14 radian. In 10 seconds, this road revolution takes 3.14 divided by 10 which is 0 0.314 radian per second sometimes they're asking about quarter one quarter which is which is what uh, one over four multiplied by 6.28 so it's angular displacement divided by time if 10 seconds so they repeatedly asking these types of questions which is just you are going to use delta theta over delta t Delta theta is the angular displacement. So for one revolution, it is two pi. For half revolution, it is pi. For quarter revolution, it is pi over two. For three over four, so yeah, one question was about this three fourth. So three fourth means pi over two plus pi over two plus pi over two, which is three pi over two angular displacement divided by time again. So uh, about angular speed, these questions are uh, frequently asked. 
but we don't know something here. We don't care about how object traveled from this point to that point. I mean, maybe it moved uh, by a speed changing continuously, maybe increase the speed, maybe decrease the speed. We don't care. There's no information about this. We only care that, yes, from here to there, this object has moved initially here, finally there. What is the time from here to there? We care only about this, nothing else. But uh, sometimes we know how object moved from here to there, accelerated, maybe speed up, maybe slow down. So moved from one point to another. This time we need, we are going to calculate acceleration. And definition of the acceleration is the same in linear and angular quantities. So we are going to define the change in speed divided by time. So angular speed of an object may change from initial to a final in a time interval delta t. In this case, you can calculate the average angular acceleration, alpha average, delta omega over delta t, which is very similar to delta v over delta t. And the average angular acceleration is also rate y divided by time. If a quantity is divided by time, so it's the rate. It's the rate of change of what? Rate of change of angular speed because angular speed is changing. Rate of change of angular speed is known as angular displacement. And it is meter per second, divided by once again second meter per second per second which is known as meter pardon pardon not meter per second sorry radian per second is the angular speed second radian per second divided by second which is radian per second squared and as a result an object stays rigid if rigid means shape does not change if object shape does not change we say it is a rigid object Angular displacements, delta thetas, angular speeds, omegas, angular accelerations, alphas, of every point on this object will have the same. Yani this spinner, when spinning, every single point on this spinner will move with the same angular displacement, same angular speed, same angular acceleration, if they all have, but every point will have this same number. But if a point of an object has a greater angular speed than the, another point, which means this object shape is not rigid, it's changing. Its shape is changing. Uh, otherwise, shape will be the same, which is known as the rigidity. This is one of the ministry exam question twice asked. So on a rigid rotating object, every point will have the same angular displacement, same angular speed, same angular acceleration. Okay, zamanımız doldu. Şimdi bir şey yapacak, e, yeniden başlayacak ve kinematik equation'ları anlatacağım. Sonra bu birinci dersimizi tamamlamış olacağız. Yani arkasından özel sorularınız varsa onları hazırlayın. Rigidity is objects to move. E, not to change the shape. If object is not changing the shape, which means the, uh, every point on this object will have the same number of angular quantities. Uh, a question about the uh, angle definition of the angular acceleration, I'm going to explain this. A car's tire rotates at an initial angular speed. This is initial angular speed, V omega i, 21.5 radian per second. The driver accelerates, this is the word which you should be careful. Accelerates, when it says you are going to use the definition of the acceleration. And after 3.5 seconds, the tire's angular speed is 28 radian per second. So this is the final, this is the initial, initial angular speed. So after 2.5 seconds, final angular speed. What is the average angular acceleration during this 3.5 seconds. So equation for average angular acceleration is omega final minus omega initial divided by delta t. 
final is 28, initial is 21.5, so in brackets, divided by 3.5, which is 1.86 radian per second. As in this problem, if the rotation object is speeding up, average acceleration is positive. If it is positive, you are going to say that it is speeding up. But if it is negative, if you calculate an acceleration as negative, you are going to say that, yes, this is a slowing down. Object is slowing down, angular speed is decreasing. But if it is positive, it is, uh, angular speed is increasing. And as I said, kinematic equation, equation, equations, one of them is coming from the definition of the angular acceleration. In fact, if you cross product this equation, this one, cross product. Omega final minus omega initial is equal to alpha delta t. So if you rearrange it, you got this. Omega final is equal to omega initial plus alpha delta t. This equation and this one are the same, only cross product one. So the first equation, first basic equation of kinematic is this. Omega final is equal to omega initial plus angular acceleration multiplied by delta t. Teacher, how can we know uh, which equation we will use? Maybe delta theta over delta t or omega final, omega initial plus alpha delta t. If there is an acceleration talked, if acceleration is given, you are going to use this one, of course. This is the equation which includes acceleration. And second one is uh, calculating angular displacement, delta theta. For accelerated motion, Always we will use this one, if accelerated motion. Teacher, how can we know? Oh, delta theta is equal to omega average multiplied by delta t. Yes, this is omega average, which is, but omega average in accelerated motion is calculated by initial angular speed plus final divided by two. So always in an accelerated motion, average angular speed is calculated by initial plus final over two. So which means you in fact multiply average speed, angular speed with time, the same as you learn. And second basic kinematic equation is this. This equation very useful for finding the angular displacement. Even you don't need to know what is acceleration, what acceleration is. You just to know that what initial speed is, what final angular speed is, what is time interval. But be careful object is must speed up or slow down, object must uh, accelerate. And uh, these value, this is the, these two equations are basic equations for uh, kinematics uh, to solve uh, problems related to uh, accelerated motion. But there are two additional equations, which also makes your job easier. But these two equations are derived equations kind of from the first one, and second one, we combine first equation and second equation, we got third one, we got fourth one. Third one is again to get, to get the angular displacement, delta theta, initial angular speed multiplied by delta t, one over two alpha delta t squared. And the last one is equation without time. If there is no time, but instead of uh, there is angular displacement is given, so you need to know what final angular speed is if you know initial, if you know alpha, if you know angular displacement. This is also a very useful equation for uh, solving some problems. But these quantities, omegas, are instantaneous angular speed. What does instantaneous mean? Instantaneous means because for a speeding object or accelerated object, speed is continuously changing. So every different instant, object will have a different speed. For that reason, that different speed at, the, at this specific moment, at the specific instant, is known as instantaneous. No olabilir de bunun yerine average diyebilir de. Average, no, average cannot be this. This is not average. Average belongs to a time interval from first to second, third second, from five to 10 second, but it's just one instant. In the fifth second, in the sixth second, in the 10th second. So instantaneous, instantaneous, belongs to an instant, okay? So we don't use the average, we put here, instantaneous values. And uh, use of these equations are, uh, especially in the 2000, before 2015, and they ask questions about these kinematic equations more frequently, especially that equation is, uh, one question is asked two or three times. You are going to see when you repeat the practice problems. 
uh, that, uh, but you can do them on your own and then if you can't you can ask me in the second session but now we, i will continue with the second section which is about the tangential speed which is about the tangential acceleration so uh, first let me tell that linear motion of an object following a circular path how linear motion is related to rotational motion we don't know about this okay when an object is moving object follows a circular path a distance by the time it turns so uh, and we know that every rigid object every rigid object this is a carousel for example an example have the same angular acceleration same angular speed same angular displacement so all they have the same numbers but uh, their linear uh, quantities are different are not the same for example assume that this carousel these two horses horse a and horse b initially here and this carousel rotated some and these horses take a new position this is the new position even they move turn the same angle yes their angle of turn which is angular displacements are equal these angles are equal so their angular displacements are equal but their distance arc lengths they traveled are not the inner horse this horse is traveling shorter distance but outer horse outermost one travels longest distance arc length for this horse is longer than arc length for that horse which means their speeds related to the linear quantities are not the same so that's why we will say that yes their angular speeds are equal because they are on a rigid object both horse rotates with the same angular speed they rotate the same angle in the same time interval yes but their distance traveled are not the same the horse on the outside b travels a longer distance than the horse which is inside in the same time interval so that's why one horse must be moving faster of course the one which is traveling longer distance in the same time interval must be faster so horse b is faster than horse a horse b is faster according to their linear speed than horse a and this linear speed and their speed along this line speed along this curve is known as tangential speed and then i can say that yes the horse which is inside has a smaller tangential speed than the force which is outside or outside is moving with a uh, greater tangential speed than the one which is inside and of course there must be a relation uh, yeah there will be we are going to uh, write an equation this tangential speed is defined uh, as definitions are also important tangential speed is the instantaneous linear speed yes it is instantaneous why that speed belongs to an instant belongs to here or belongs to here belongs to here wherever this horse is so uh, this speed belongs to that point for that is it's instantaneous linear speed of an object along the object circle at right tangential means the far distance from the x-ray yes the b has greater tangential speed than a why because b is farther from the x-ray than b yeah it's proportional radius could longer reduce greater tangential speed shorter reduce smaller tangential speed this is proof of this tangential equation but i need to prove so tangential speed proportional to radius if it is greater angular equivalent tangential speed is greater some questions are asking teacher um, how are n omega related inverse or directly proportional so this is matamad we don't in physics we don't look at the quant equations only by maths we are looking by physics what does omegas can be different mean the object is not rigid so if omegas are not dif are different which means your object is not rigid so we are talking about a non-rigid object and its shape is changing so if shape of an object is not changing you cannot say that how r and omega are related no you say that how vt and r omega are, are related yes because for a rigid object omega is constant you see that r and vt are directly proportional greater r 
greater vt pardon longer r greater vt shorter r smaller vt this is what we can say for a rigid object we never uh, think about the relation between r and omega and in these types of comparisons always one quantity must be kept constant to compare other two so what what is kept here constant which is omega why kept constant because it's a rigid object so for a rigid omega is constant for every point then you can compare how r and vt changing as r increases vt increases this is how uh, we define tangential speed is so tangential speed as i said it's a linear speed it's a translational speed it is the usual speed you studied in the 11th grade distance divided by time um, but it depends it's a, for a rigid object rotating about a specific axis it is directly proportional to radius as radius increases tangential speed also increases for that as in horse speed moving faster in tangential speed than horse a and what if object is not moving with constant tangential speed what if object is moving or speeding up or slowing down so assume that carousel already started and then it must attain a speed or carousel must be stopped so then in this case these speeds will change these tangential speeds will change and here is the constant but here it's changing why initial and final i give some numbers again tangential speeds but not constant when the carousel accelerates or uh, with a angular acceleration alpha the horse accelerates from initial tangential speed to final or decelerates it slows down it's also possible the horse also experiences a linear acceleration. We are defining linear acceleration as usual way again. Omega final minus omega, pardon, V final minus initial divided by T final over T initial, same thing. But uh, we don't care about this. We care about every different point has also has different ta uh, tangential acceleration. Tangential acceleration is the instantaneous linear acceleration of an object along the object's circular path. So again, so this uh, tangential acceleration will be along the circle like this here, like this here, like this here. So it will be drawn tangent to the circle. Tangential demek along the tangent demek. Bunu çok söyledik size. O yüzden it's defined as the instantaneous again instantaneous why instantaneous because for every different point tangential accelerations even directions different even say that magnitudes are the same directions are continuously changing that's why it belongs to that point belongs to this point so every point has a differently directed tangential acceleration for that is an instantaneous belongs to an instant it is the instantaneous linear acceleration of an object along the object's circular path, directed along the tangent circular path, and defined as rate of change. Again, rate of change. Rate of change what? Tangential speed. Rate of change in tangential speed is called tangential acceleration. Ha! Huh. You can get the equation of tangential speed by profile. Change angulars, tangent tangential speed. These are tangential angular speed. So the atomic over that is called oh, this is the proof. Yes, a change is alpha. So, which means as r increases, at also increases ne demek bu i will go back to this shape if there are two horses like this one and if this uh, carousel is speeding up or slowing down the horse which is outside will experience a greater tangential acceleration than which is inside because radius of the inside is less shorter than radius of the the outside one then at is equal to r times alpha at is positive if object speeding up not only at both alpha and at are positive angular acceleration and tangential acceleration both are positive object is if object is speeding up both are negative if object is slowing down and summary about these quantities this is arc length this is angular displacement these two quantities are related by r greater r greater arc length smaller r smaller arc length 
these quantities are constant for a rigid object. Why? Because shape is not changing. These are quant same for every different point, but every different point on this object has not does not have same arc length, does not have same tangential speed, does not have same tangential acceleration. So proportional to R, longer R, greater arc length, longer R, greater tangential speed, longer R, greater tangential acceleration. This equation are relates the angular quantities with linear quantities and all angular quantities as you see multiplied by r to get the linear quantities and third one and last one we will study in this section is centripetal acceleration centripetal acceleration is completely different because its nature is different so uh, centripetal acceleration is because of the if an object is when an object is moving on a circular path, its direction is continuously changing. So the centripetal acceleration is coming from the change in direction of motion. So velocity normally a vector quantity. It has both direction and magnitude. And if it is a vector quantity, we can change the vector by two ways, by changing its magnitude and its number, or by changing its direction. So, velocity is a vector quantity expressed both in magnitude and direction, like 5 meter per second due west, 30 kilometer per hour to the right, or up or down. So, if velocity is a vector quantity, we can change it by two ways, by changing the magnitude of the velocity, magnitude of the velocity, which is speed, in fact. This is defining the speed when we say magnitude of the velocity, it's speed. Or as object moves on a circular path, its direction of motion continuously changes. By changing direction, you can also change velocity. By changing the magnitude, you can change the velocity. If magnitude, if speed is changing, we, uh, we are going to measure the tangential acceleration. Yes, by changing tangential speed, object gains tangential acceleration. Remember, if it is speeding up, so we say that, yeah, there's a tangential acceleration tangent to the circle, and we just explained this one. But if the direction of motion is changing, yes, it's like this, like this, like this, like this. So direction of the motion is continuously changing. A change in direction of the motion causes a change in velocity. This change in velocity produces an acceleration named as centripetal acceleration. That's why centripetal acceleration is defined as acceleration due to a change in direction of motion, in direction of velocity. So centripetal acceleration is acceleration due to a change in direction of motion only, only, or direction of velocity. It's towards the center or center, centripetal means towards the center or seeking to the center or looking to the center. So that's why this centripetal acceleration will have a direction and its direction will show towards the center. So it's named centripetal because velocity vector of the object continues to shifting towards the center. Look at here, it is up, up to the page. But now to the right, how it changed towards the center? Not exactly, but towards, it's changing. So it's to the right, to the left, now down. So it's shifting. So this vector is shifting, shifting direction, changing direction. So for that reason, definition of centripetal acceleration is given in terms of the change in direction, the time rate of change, variation of direction, the time rate of variation of direction of velocity when an object moves on a circular path is called centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration itself is a vector. Yes, look at here. Always they are pointing the center of the circle. It's a vector quantity. Its direction is towards the center of the circle at any instant that to the center, to the center, to the center, to the center, to the center. But direction is continuously changing. Direction is continuously changing. Be careful. Yeah, it's towards the center, it's not a direction. We, we say direction to the left, down, right, up, left, down, right, up. Last year, some student asked me, teacher, both are 
always towards the center, y direction is changing. Towards the center does not define a direction for us. Uh, we define direction left, right, up, down, east, west, north, south. Yes, towards the center is defining something, which means it's looking to the uh, center, but its direction is left on the right side. When here it's down to the page, when here it's to the right, and it's to the up. So its direction is continuously changing. Centripetal acceleration direction continuously changing. Centripetal acceleration itself is a per is perpendicular to tangential velocity. Look at here, these angles are always per 90 degree. This is one of the most popular question in the ministry exam. So centripetal acceleration, what is the ang angle between v tangential speed and centripetal acceleration? It's 90. What is angle between tangential acceleration and centripetal acceleration? 90. So centripetal on the radius, tangential is on the tangent. So angle between them is always 90 degrees. And its magnitude, of course, we should calculate a magnitude. Inversely proportional to r and directly proportional to square of the tangential speed. AC is equal to v2 squared over r. And if required, sometimes angular speed is given. You can insert r omega instead of vt and you get ac as r omega squared. Yine burada bana bir soru geliyor. Diyor ki o öğrenci, teacher, ac is in this equation inversely proportional to r, but in this equation directly proportional to r. Doğru. Ama bir şey unut unutuyoruz. Others are constant. Bak diyor ki sana, if you keep tangential speed constant, which means <laughs> angular speed can change. Yani which means object is not rigid. R and AC are inversely proportional for non-rigid objects. Ama bu öyle değil. If you keep omega constant, yani you are talking about the rigid object. For an object whose uh, shape is not changing, omega is constant. So in this case, R and AC are directly proportional. Demek ki bunu if you are talking about this, if you want to compare AC and T, you are talking about a non-rigid object whose shape is directly changing. You can compare AC and R, and you can say that AC and R inversely proportional, but this case is not studied in your book, but this case is studied in your book. So a rigid object, when shape is not changing, R and AC are directly proportional. As R increases, AC increases greater, larger circle. So in this case, angular speed, but um, tangential acceleration of that point will be greater, okay? A cell unit of centripetal acceleration is meter per second squared. It's a linear quantity too, not radian per second squared, meter per second squared. And better to know this, um, centripetal acceleration, centripetal acceleration always points to the center of the circle and acceleration normally defined by delta v over delta t, which means delta v also points to the center of the circle. So, yani bunu sadece bu kadar bilseniz yeter. Delta v always points to the center of the circle, just as centripetal acceleration. For the case, if they ask about what is direction of delta v if an object moves on a circular path, and of course. Uh, if an object is moving with a start from on a circular path and then accelerates even turns. So in this case, two acceleration, this object will have, this car will have. One of them is, it, this car is speeding up. It has a tangential acceleration because speeding up. So it has a tangential acceleration. Also changing direction. It has a centripetal acceleration. They make key. When an object is more in a circular path, and if this object, this car speeds up or slows down, this object will have, this car will have both accelerations. One of them is centripetal acceleration because of the change in direction. Second one is tangential acceleration because speeding up. In this case, we will calculate a resultant acceleration, which is known as total acceleration. So speeding up causes, produces a tangential acceleration. I'm going to combine it here. And then 
change in direction produces centripetal acceleration towards the center. One of them is tangent to the circle. The other one is along the radius of the circle. If we combine these two, we got the total acceleration. Total acceleration, result in the acceleration. And total acceleration or result in the acceleration can be calculated by Pythagorean theorem, which is equal to a t squared plus a c squared is equal to a total. This was the last year's ministry exam question. They ask, what is the relation? Show the following is correct relation between AC and AT. And they gave this equation in different form. Of course, the correct one is what? AT total is equal to root of AT squared plus AC squared. And also, they ask about this angle, that angle. Again, we are going to use uh, tangent theta as we did in chapter six. Opposite side divided by adjacent side, tangent theta. Opposite side of this right this triangle is AC. Adjacent side is AT. If you divide AC by AT, you got tangent theta, and theta is equal to inverse of tangent, AC minus AC divided by AT. Okay, this is the uh, end of the uh, section.